All right, so here's what's going to happen. You're going to roll it out to me. Now doesn't sound like a good time to smoke, bro. What the? The free kick, boss. You're going to roll it to me. I'm going to stop it. And you're going to put it in. It's not difficult. I can already tell you're not listening, bro. Nah, I swear, honestly. Trust me. I've got this. What is it this You remember the free kick routine, but you didn't remember to put on your shoes. What the hell are you even... Yo guys, it is your boy Niren here, and you are watching FTW. This is of course the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. What's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, let's take a look at Twitter. Nothing has been kicking off. Twitter introduced a new view limit where users can only see 600 tweets per day temporarily unless you're on Twitter blue. Look, listen, we've all got the same 600 tweets in a day. Look, listen, I'm going to be fuming realizing I'm on tweet 599 and it's only 8. 3 in the morning. Fabrizio Romano was not happy with the change. Can you imagine though, you're following a transfer story on Twitter and then... How am I busting out a VPN just to find out if Declan Rice has signed for Arsenal? Speaking of transfers though, and that's where we start today. As Arsenal have been linked with a sensational move for Kylian Mbappe. Oh, for God, I swear, these French journalists are just making stuff up at this point. But I mean... I want an 11 inch penis, it's not gonna happen. The Gunners are weighing up their options for the French striker, and I'm weighing up my options for Dua Lipa. Hey yo, babes. No. Okay. The thing is, lads, he's not weighing you up in return. What would this deal even look like? Morning. How much is this? 149, sir. I've got 50p. Fuck you. Arsenal are bidding Eddie and Ketia in a six-pack of prime as we speak. Imagine Mbappe reading the fine print, realizing he's only owed his wage if Arsenal win the World Cup. Listen, if they need help funding the transfer, maybe it's time to call Pep Guardiola. Is Arteta's picked up the phone to Pep? Said, listen. Suck your nan, boss. You know what I will say though? I've seen this storyline before. Will we see Kate Abdo and Kylian Mbappe flirting on live TV? Think about it. Here we have Kylian collecting the Arsenal Player of the Season after just five game weeks. He's going to be bonding with Gunners fans over their mutual hatred for Emi Martinez. But Chelsea supporters will be trying to beef him on the TFL when they see him in an Arsenal shirt. Champions of Europe! You'll never sing that! You'll never sing that! Honestly, Arsenal negotiators, good luck trying to make this deal work because their representatives are about to walk into a war zone. Yeah, this is not ideal, Mikel. The current French riots, are, well, kind of across the country, but in Paris, are absolutely mental at the moment. I'm sure you know the backstory, but there's been devastating scenes all over the city. Not entirely sure how Vitinha, the PSG midfielder, got involved in it all, though. Listen, lads, uh, trust me, we need to sign this guy. He's he's on fire right now. No, genuinely, he, he's on fire in the middle of the riots. Send some help. Mikel's going to be on four-star police right now, just trying to offer Killian a goal bonus. Look, maybe, maybe they should just conduct the deal from the safety of London. Sorry, yeah, what, what are you saying? I'm trying to... You're, you're cracking up a little bit. I think you're going for a tunnel. Over at United, and another major deal is done, though. Mason Mount has swapped the blue of Chelsea for Old Trafford. The last six months, this may not come as a surprise to you, but it doesn't make it any easier to tell you that I've made the decision to leave Chelsea. This Ooh, man is being held hostage in his goodbye video. He also has totally different hair in this video to what he arrived at United's training ground with. The man pre-filmed it. Chelsea fans are seeing this video on demand. Yeah, so basically... In a bit, lads. You know what, though? I have the actual reason he's leaving Chelsea right here. Chelsea boy, since he was six, is passing Porto. It took the piss. He's one of our own. There is no doubt. He's Carbon's finest. This Mason Mount. You can't obviously condone that behaviour no matter what. I'm finding the response to this story a little bit odd. This guy's been getting abused by Chelsea fans for the last 12 months who all wanted him out of the club and now he's left and they're bamboozled by the situation. Frank Lampard is completely devastated. Gutted he's left Chelsea after dedicating his entire managerial career to Mason. United could really mount a challenge next season. Get me because obviously... Nah but genuinely it makes me sick. Kai Havertz was also upset by it all. This man forgot that he left 
left Chelsea as well. And Arsenal fans are confident now, trying it with other Chelsea players. Reese to Arsenal, who says no? The small issue is that that Reese James says no. It's a shithousery award for the Chelsea right back. United could change this man, to be fair. We've got Mason Mount here in the dressing room when Marcus Rashford connects to the Bluetooth speaker. Ben Chilwell when they meet back up again and he starts playing Wizkid to him. Oh, mate, that is absolutely dotty. Turn that up. What is that? Garage. United players are excited by his entrance. We've got Lisandro Martinez warming up, getting ready to fizz balls into the Englishman. There's a lot of pressure, though. The number seven shirt's been given to him. MM7, you know. Is he even better than Mini Minter? We've got Cristiano Ronaldo seeing the next heir to his throne at the club. <laughs> The fuck is that guy? Meanwhile, Alejandro Garnacho cannot be impressed by all of this. And things will get frosty between the two at Carrington for the first day of training. But at Mason's old club, Maurizio Pochettino has arrived at Chelsea for the first time. He had big words in his first interview saying that Chelsea are the greatest club in the country. This man is distancing himself from Tottenham's war crimes and I hear it. We've got Poch here when Todd Bowley asks him about his CV and sees Spurs on it. Um. Chicken in the ball? Is it Chicken, chicken Ball FC? He's got to win Chelsea supporters over, all right. And his new outfit for the touchline on game week one is very extreme. Tottenham fans are going to be celebrating when Mason Mount inevitably scores a winner against Chelsea. But Pochettino is also planning an extremely brutal pre-season training regime. Pull one out for Romelu Lukaku, who's going to have to endure this. Raheem Sterling's going to be fuming, realising it's not just four hours of squats. And don't say the word regime in front of Mikhailo Mudrik right now, for God's sake. But he did at least cook up for the players first, setting up a barbecue for the staff at the club on the first day. The line for this with all the players Chelsea have is going to be insane. This is going to be the only service that Romelu Lukaku gets at the club all season. He ain't playing games. Rome will be waiting for a second plate once everybody's gone. What are you doing? Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Meanwhile, Maurizio Pochettino and his assistant will be seeing Frank Lampard calling up, wanting to get an invite. How many missed calls have you got? 28. That's bullshit. I've got 73. And Paul Graham Potter, he reckons he's eligible for all of this, turning up just wanting a free beer. Well, well. What brings you here, Potter? But this isn't the boss I expected to do up a barbecue, especially with Ange Postacoglu on the scene. The new Tottenham boss is literally from Australia and was not happy seeing a shrimp put on the barbie. He copied my whole fucking flow! Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar! Watch is ready to throw hands, though, when Ange arrives at Chelsea's training ground wanting a scrap. That's not even the biggest issue at Spurs. Ange Postacoglu is a good boss. He's won a lot. But imagine Harry Kane trying to pronounce his surname. Hey, Jim, they're doing the... They join, they join, they what they doing now the world of football is about to change forever as fifa are looking to change the offside rule it's a mad change in getting trialed in the netherlands italy and sweden where basically the entire body has to be beyond the defender to be counted as offside this is a massive disadvantage for marcus rashford he can't help his head shape mate imagine if this had existed when timo Werner was in the prem here we have him discussing how many goals he'd have scored for the season probably around 90 95, 96, was it 94, 95, 96? If he was in the Premier League now, he'd be winning the Ballon d'Or, mate, I'm telling you. Do we trust referees in England to remember that this is a new rule? They're stressed in the VAR room trying to actually work out what's going on as we speak. It's going to have the same issues that the current offside rule has because there is going to be the issue where someone isn't beyond the last defender by like one stud and we're still going to get controversy. It's just moved to a different body part. At Liverpool, and we've gone from signing no midfielders to signing all of them with Dominic Zabozlai joining from Leipzig. Over 60s are getting ready to spell his name incorrectly eight times at the same time. Poor old Desmond's gonna need three sets of reading glasses. It's simple, lads. Here's a lesson. All right, class, how are we doing? Yeah, lad, yeah, not yes, bad, mate. Yes, I'm doing well, mate. Just start the fucking lesson. So repeat after me. So, Bosh, Lai. Truthfully, his name is a dyslexic disaster. But the Hungarian joins and takes the number eight shirt, and Curtis Jones will not be happy with him taking his starting spot. Sort this tonight, lad. Come and meet me. I'm on my own. We'll sort this out tonight. Liverpool fans could not wait for the announcement, tweeting RB Salzburg, who he's not played for in two years. But Dominic will have to wait for the European competition he wants. He put on IG that he's back in the Champions League. Yeah, Dom, I've got some bad news for you. Why are the Europa League tweeting about us. For God's sake, lads, it's bad enough. Over at Barcelona, and there's the crazy news of Prime partnering with the Catalan side. I think the club misunderstood the fans when they said they wanted the Prime Barca back. Yes, JJ was yes, delighted yes. with the news before remembering they don't have any money. No! 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 Fuck! Shit! 
effect the influence they're gonna have on the club will be crazy we got logan paul not taking shit when he sees Lewandowski's tiktok sir stegan's punches are gonna look a little bit different after 10 minutes around ksi meanwhile ronald araujo is getting straight in jj's face on the training ground thinking he's actually a player now at the under 21 euros and england are into the final with a 3-0 win over israel making it to the final to play either spain or ukraine having won every game and not conceded a single goal these lot are smashing it football is coming home but like the the, the zero edition because it's like the under 21 we've got emil smith rowe celebrating with the rest of the under 21s at the ripe old age of 22 meanwhile anthony gordon scored the winner against germany in the quarters everton fans will not be happy seeing him prosper that bad lad i'm like to see you up now hoping to get kicked out good luck to the squad though they are looking absolutely phenomenal and i hope they manage to win in the final one man who might be eligible for the under 21s at this rate is hung min son he's now one year younger I beg your pardon now i didn't realize this but in south korea they deemed you to be one years of age straight from birth wow, wow, nah. none of this three months old malarkey straight from the womb you're a year old they've looked at the rest of the world realized that makes no sense and changed it to what we do so every person in korea has just become a year younger overnight this man's got taxed on his own age he's gone back a year this man's gonna wake up in covid times this brother's whole birth certificate has got a high ping lagging all over the place his dad was pretty skeptical about the matter finding out that hung min wasn't the same age he used to be look that's not my son how's he gonna go to training and luka modric is there Oof, all right i'm ready to go to the game today big one hit wait hang on as i've been here before this season's champions league winners though man city have a new star of their own phil foden's son who's amassed over two million followers on instagram and honestly i have no idea what is going on here he replied to his own dad apparently he's not the one running the account it's phil let's be real football with my dad ha 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 yeah love you son at newcastle and they're active in the transfer market completing the signing of sandro tonali from milan there's gonna be a culture clash here he's gone from italian restaurants to greg's the poor guy's gonna be distraught seeing corned beef pasta up there dan bird isn't quite getting the hang of trying to speak italian to him internationale <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, with another central midfielder joining the club, Sean Longstaff's asking Eddie Howe about his new game time. So I'm like first reserve then? Well, we haven't really got any reserves, so sort of no. Cool, cool, cool. And one other signing Newcastle are looking to complete is apparently Willy Nonto from relegated Leeds. I don't know about that one. That's going to end in tears when Saudi Arabia find out Eddie Howe's interested in Willy. Now, speaking of behind bars, and fullback Benjamin Mendy is unfortunately back in the news after claiming to a judge that he slept with 10,000 women. What a load of bollocks. Yep, despite this man only being alive for 10,575 days, he said this under oath. The judge was not having it. You think you could spare us the bullshit for one minute? Someone send this degenerate of a man back to HMP Baguette. His legal team were trying to crunch the numbers in court. Pep Guardiola was shocked he had enough time to simultaneously play football and be a wrong -un. Meanwhile, Man City fans are celebrating the fact that he's not at the club anymore. Benjamin Mendy has allegedly done some horrendous things. And if you're a victim of that or know anyone that is, you can find some useful links for support down in the description. Back at Liverpool, our away kit has been been revealed looking like one piece of spearmint this kit tastes like colgate lads what did we do announce it on an excel spreadsheet Look, listen i'm all for highlighting the long-term vision of the football club but this is a spec savers advert now over on sky and gary neville was absolute box office doing some abseiling this week after jamie carragher wasn't up for it at anfield and walk down fuck him that's it perfect now push back push back push back oh. Oh. come on you shit back the only man who ever did an abseil whose heart rate went down. Hey, look at that shitty little badge on past. You'll never walk alone. I fucking am. <laughs> David De Gea's picked up a reputation for being in every single player's goal compilations over on Twitter, so someone took it upon themselves to make a two-hour fraud compilation for him. Honestly, a little bit generous with some of his mistakes. This man's put an IMAX fail comp out. Cinematic levels of hating. Right, babe, honestly, I cannot wait to show you this one. I, I want to see it in 3D. Hakim ZX moved to Saudi Arabia has fallen through after he failed a medical, and he took to Instagram talking about his knee problems last 
laughing about the situation. Listen, Haki, me and you both, bro. Meanwhile, over on Twitter, one girl told the impulsive story of her going back to John Joe Shelby's house with Nottingham Forest striker Chris Wood, only for John Joe to proceed to put on montages of his own footballing moments. First of all, who the fuck is making a compilation of John Joe Shelby? Secondly, can you imagine him to the rest of the room when a 35 yard shit pinger comes on? <laughs> Here I come. Oh, here I come. Chris Wood, though, was willing to deliver the wood and was fighting for the TV remote, looking for his own highlights on YouTube. Now, speaking of dishing out wood, and in France, Neymar is in trouble again. This man might have more active DMs than Arsenal's squad list, but he is still bored after being fined for illegally building a lake without permission. He's been fined $3.3 million. This man is in deep water. Building a lake unprovoked is crazy behavior. A body of water, you know, in your garden. To be honest, he's dealt with enough bodies recently, so let's not go there. Someone from Brazil, though, is leaving everything in their will to the PSG star. This means that everything they own will be passed on to the Brazilian when they hit the stairs. What is kicking off here, then? He's going to be baffled when this Don's stamp collection comes through the door. You think Neymar needs a used Fiat Punto. No, just give it to your son or something, bro. At his club, though, and there's an even madder situation going on. Christoph Gaultier has officially left the club, but leaked emails have shown his racist tendencies, complaining about both the number of Muslim and also black players back at OGC Nice. Here we have Christopher trying to plead his innocence the next day. But I'm not in any way racist. In fact, one of my best friends is friends with a man who's black, and he's very black. Oh, yeah. This guy is generationally racist. Anyone can get it, you know. He wasn't too pleased seeing Kylian Mbappe arrive to training for the first time. What are you doing here? And not in a racist way. And will not be taking any prisoners when he realises that Neymar's great-great-great-grandfather was actually from Zambia. Pop, pop. Bang! On the floor. End of. Over at Monaco, and they've hired boss Adolf Herter. Again, can can someone please rename this man? He'll be at least hoping for a more successful time in France on this occasion. In Spain and Sevilla are in serious financial trouble. With the amount of debt they're in, they've announced their entire squad, their entire team is for sale. A car boot sale for the entire football club, you know. Finally, someone else is going to actually win something in the Europa League. Although Unai Emery is struggling to resist a return to to his former club to win them European silverware again. And imagine Nottingham Forest's owner hearing that he can buy 25 players at the same time. Real Madrid have signed a new youth player from Las Palmas. His name's Ica de Apa. He's a centre back and was born in 2010. 2010! For this Don, this man's student card expired eight years ago. The world of fashion has seen this incredible creation this week in the form of some sensational sunglasses that would be the final endgame for Carlo Angelotti. Atletico Madrid fans were seen burning their own shirt this week because as a club, they decided to return back to their former club crest. It's a slight change. But it has basically a lot straighter dimensions. And apparently there were some Atleti fans that really hated the new version. So going back to the old version is a win for them. But this seems excessive. Just put it away in a wardrobe or something. In Italy, there's some new Napoli-based ice cream for sale. Wait, hang on a second. Inter have signed Marcus Turam on a free transfer after the Frenchman left Borussia Mönchengladbach this summer. He once had to get his own Wikipedia page up to convince a steward that he was actually a footballer taking part in the match that he travelled to. He'll be hoping that Inter stewards actually have a Sky Sports subscription. Meanwhile, Gianluigi Buffon could be swapping Parma for Saudi Arabia. This this man has got a 15 million euro a year offer to head over to the Gulf state. Gianluigi, please, bro, just put your feet up. Have a rest. Does this guy owe the mafia or something? Why is he still playing? Him and Ruben Neves trying to combine together at Al Ali is going to be the biggest age gap you've ever seen. The G in GK is geriatric as far as he's concerned. In Germany and down in the amateur leagues, these lot have managed to discover the kickoff glitch, but in real life. Meanwhile, over at Duisburg, and there was a close one this afternoon in a preseason friendly. Now that it's time for your goals of the week, and we start off over in Asia, where youngster Ryu Hardy had the ball come to him, and, well, I mean, he's just slapped it into the top corner. That's really all I can say. Staying in the continent and at Urawa Reds over in the J League, some quick thinking here has caught the goalkeeper off guard, with a free kick being taken at the speed of light from the halfway line and dipping underneath the crossbar. But finally, we may well have the greatest 
greatest doll you've ever seen in this show. Take a bow, Ruben Lima over at Buckley Down, who has picked up the ball basically in his own half. Brought out some beautiful skill, amazing flair, and sensational dribbling ability, only to get into the area, twist back again, and then rebona it over the goalkeeper. This is football heritage. <laughs> This brother wouldn't have survived a second in a school assembly. Right now, I want everyone to be serious and concentrate, okay? Qatar faced off against Mexico in the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Now, Qatar, who are firmly based in North America, managed to pull off the greatest shit house of a result that you've ever seen, having one shot in the entire game to Mexico's over 25, and despite only having 23% possession, won 1 0. Benfica fans are excited about the return of Angel Di Maria and dedicated an entire day tracking a plane they believed had the Argentine on it, only to realise it literally it was just a random plane. It's coming from IB for this man's still partying with Wayne Lineker. <laughs> Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game, the segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> and that concludes the beautiful game. Over in Brazil and in Serie C, the third division I assume, we've got a free kick that's ready to be taken just outside the area. But it's not going to get taken by who you think it is, because Fabio Jose Rampi, the goalkeeper of São Jose, has decided to step up and slap one, an incredible free kick into the top corner. He's 34, but it might be time for him to step outfield. In Chile and Union La Calera have been absolutely robbed. With the scoreline still level, a Colo Colo back pass caught their goalkeeper off guard. The crossed over the line but wasn't seen by the referee it should have been an OG only for Colo Colo to spark a counter-attack go up the other end of the pitch and take the lead themselves I told you VAR rooms would start getting confused yeah you know they changed it all the players gotta be behind the line as well for it to be a goal I don't know what the fuck happened in the Copa Sudamericana this week because there were 10 reds at full time in this match 10 red cards in one go that might genuinely be an FTW record over in Japan and we've seen a goal from a goalkeeper already today but that was just a set piece get ready for the first box to box goalie you've ever seen and his efforts dribbling the ball out from his own area are rewarded with a sick finish on the volley and staying on the japanese vibe in their under 17 semi-final we've got two players playing rock paper scissors to take a free kick and thank fuck this guy won in an alternate universe that's just hit an old man in rose ed brazilian wonder kid endrick scored this week and celebrated in front of opposition fans with a lovely little dance but the fans of the opponents weren't as appreciative. Wow, and it's a yellow card. I don't know what's going on in the MLS either. I'm not gonna lie. It's time for some Indonesian action though now, because they provide easily the weirdest penalty run up that you might see this year. <laughs> And also the biggest aerial mismatch of the episode as well. Has Buller over here is gonna have a troublesome time marking this guy from a corner. Closer to home though, and Joao Felix was spotted in a West Ham kit this week, having spent the second half of last season on loan at Chelsea. Listen, I'm sure he always grew up supporting the club with Mark Noble as his hero. Brighton signed Dutch goalkeeper Bart Verbruggen this week, and they announced it with a Simpsons theme. I'm a big fan of these announcements these days. Tell you what though, this is gonna give Caro Matoma PTSD to his uni degree. Apparently, Wolves winger Mateus Nunes and I Show Speed were involved in an altercation in a club in Portugal. This is what Mateus saw from his POV. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's the sensational step down at Forest Green, who has sacked their manager, Duncan Ferguson, and replaced him with Hannah Dingley, who becomes the first female boss of a men's senior squad in the country, domestically anyway, and is a caretaker for now, but could well get the job permanently. Now, in Argentina, in the lower leagues, and we saw the longest penalty issue out of the year. It ended 14-13, but had a grand total of 40 penalty kicks taken. I say this year, it actually started in 2021. It's been going on for that long. In 
Brazil and at Guarini, serious questions need to be answered of this goalkeeper's hands. Imagine you've won a game of headers and volleys, right? It's now your time to dish out the punishment. A lovely little bit of red dust. All right, Neymar, calm down. <laughs> Over in the Mongolian Premier League, and we've got yet another big victory here. 22-0 the scoreline. Over in Kenya, and Vihiga Queens have won the Women's Premier League. And as a result, each player has been handed 7,000 Kenyan shillings. That sounds like a great team bonus for winning a league title over there. But when you convert it to pounds, it works out that they've won 39 quid each. Over at Dover Athletic, some crazy scenes there. They thought they'd signed a player by the name of Ademola Shokunbi, only to realise that he'd actually signed for Dulwich. Hamlet instead. They tweeted saying they look forward to announcing players who actually want to play for the club. Ooh. And over in the Finnish third division, a goalkeeper had his contract terminated at the club after making three howlers in one game. I mean, listen, look, he might get done for match fixing. I would do the same. Now that it's time for still nil-nil, you guys know the score by now. This is the segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And I'll be honest with you, today's clip might just sum up Sunday League perfectly. Because when you try and play out from the back, show any ability as a defender in Sunday League, you're gonna get caught out. But then equally, when you ask a striker to actually put the ball in the back of the net... Oh! oh. oh my word. Well, yeah, you might not actually get caught out after all. On to the weird stuff though now. Over at JSK, a club in Algeria, they have won 19 different football kits this season alone. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, not their kit man needs a raise for a start. I don't think the fans can even pick out what team they're meant to be supporting anymore. And finally, we've got an absolutely ridiculous story over at Argentino Del Meno, where someone's gone down looking for some treatment. There's a break, a stoppage in play, but the referee has not is something very out of the ordinary going on. And that's Axel Overhero having a piss by the touchline. Yep, yeah, that is correct. Axel here has decided that a break means a toilet break as well. He's tried to sneakily relieve his bladder, has been caught in the act, and the referees sent him off. That though is going to wrap up football this week, and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video, and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure, right? at you guys today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.